Moving mobs is easier than you think using these 10 tricks. Hello there, Ray here, and after watching this video, you'll never complain about moving mobs. The easiest mobs to move are the ones you can carry in your inventory. This includes all the different types of fish, as well as tadpoles and even axolotls. There's also ones that can kind of hatch like turtle eggs, which you can silk touch and place down anywhere and will hatch over time, or chicken eggs, which have a chance to produce babies, or like using ender pearls to actually produce ender mite mobs and bees can get captured inside of bee nest. And when placed down during the daytime, they'll come out. You can also build mobs like snow golems, iron golems, and withers just with materials. There's also other easy entities to carry around like boats, minecarts, armor stands, paintings, and even item frames, which can interact with stuff. The next easiest mobs to move are pet mobs, which are tamed versions of cats, wolves as well as parrots. These things will automatically teleport to the player once you get so far away from them, which means you can move them infinite amounts of distance. We can do this by making the pet stand up and then attaching it with a lead to a fence that is hooked up to a piston with a pressure plate. Then we can just leave an item there and when the item despawns, it'll cause the mob to instantly teleport to us. Or alternatively, you can also add a clock to this. Then when the item actually despawns, you can see the cat will immediately teleport all the way to us because the lead will break, which will allow it to teleport. The next easiest way to move mobs is by holding out their favorite food. This is the food which is typically used to actually burrito, them, including stuff like tropical fish in a bucket for axolotls and slime balls for frogs. But sometimes it's just easier to drag mobs using leads. Leads not only work on passive mobs, but they also work in some mobs like dolphins and squids and even hoglins and zoglins. And as long as the terrain is flat, you can go as fast as possible and the lead will never actually break. You can also move mobs very easily using boats. Just placing a boat down near a mob, once it gets close and touches the edge, it'll immediately be picked up, which makes it easy to contain mobs. Then you can hop in yourself and move them about, which is great for moving over water or even land. In some cases, it's hard to actually break the boat to get the mob back out. If the mob can be used with a lead, this will immediately eject it. You can even stick like babies inside of them, where typically when it comes to actually placing mobs inside, the mob has to be slightly smaller than the actual size of the boat in order to be picked up. This is why you can't pick up stuff like gas. Well, the biggest mob you can normally pick up is a panda, but if you push in like a baby donkey, when it grows up, it will actually be bigger than the boat, which is something you normally can't do. Besides boat, you can also use minecarts to pick up mobs. It's a little bit harder though, because you do need to have the minecart moving, which is easily done by having curved rails and then having the minecart move. This will pick up mobs that are nearby. Besides using a curved rail, you can also use an incline rail with a setup like this. This will cause the minecart to come up and pick up the mob and it'll be stuck inside where you can easily transport it. Now, unlike boats, which can only pick up some mobs, when it comes to minecarts, it can pick up pretty much any type of mob. So you can get stuff like ravagers or elder guardians inside minecarts. But like boats, you cannot also pick up bosses or bats inside of minecarts. Now, there are some mobs that are pretty annoying to move, such as villagers. Villagers will try to go into beds at night, so if you remove their initial bed and place one far away, they'll eventually walk towards it if it's within 48 blocks. They'll also do a similar thing for a new workstation if it's within working hours, or the bell if they're trying to go to a meeting. Striders, pigs, camels, and all horse types can be ridden with a saddle. And when ridden, you can easily move them. Now when it comes to hostile mobs, you could just use the player yourself to actually have them chase after you. Just make sure not to be wearing thorns so you don't kill them if they get to you. You could also use potions on mobs to help you move them, such as putting a weakness potion on a zombie so it can't do any damage to you, using night vision so you can easily see in the dark, using invisibility so you get close to dangerous mobs, just make sure you don't collide with them or wear armor, otherwise they will see you, fire resistance so you can easily move mobs through lava or fire without them dying, speed so they'll move faster, slowness so you can control them more, turtle master so you can make them even slower, or you can put it on yourself to make you super resistance to damage, water breathing so mobs don't drown, but water breathing won't help help mobs in suffocating on land. Instant health, great for healing mobs you accidentally damage or for doing damage towards undead mobs. Instant damage works the opposite or hurts most mobs, but it heals the undead. Keep in mind regen and poison don't actually heal undead mobs, but regen is good for healing most mobs. Slow falling if you don't want them to take fall damage and splash water balls if you want to extinguish mobs on fire. You can also use water to move mobs, but it normally only works on nice flat areas. For fire resistant mobs, you can actually use lava, which can slowly move them. You're able to actually lead a mob and fly with it using a Lytra without having to worry about it taking too much damage. Just aim straight up and launch yourself up. And then once you get up, then level out. And then when you land, mobs will hardly take any damage or you can land in water if you're afraid. 
There's also some mobs that will be attracted to items, such as foxes and dolphins going after items, villagers going after and picking up crop items, piglins will go after gold items, and there's other cases of moving mobs like mobs that are afraid of certain items like hoglins from warped fungus, but this isn't very easy for easily controlling them. You can also move mobs upward using bubble columns. Start out by first stacking up blocks on four sides to hold in the initial water column. Scaffolding makes this easy. Then come in with some soul sand in here. Now climb up. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more tricks. Then at the top, place in a block and water up against that. Then at the bottom, plant in kelp and go ahead bone mill that kelp to the top. Then break it and now you have a bubble column. Any mobs that you push inside of there will get transported all the way to the top. If you want to move mobs downwards, best to use water for no damage or slime block, but they'll slowly bounce but won't take any damage. If you want to just get reduced damage, you can either use a hay bale or a honey block. When going very long distances, it can be helpful to make a fly machine. If you just put a sticky piston and honey like this, and then put another one that is opposite, and then come in here and place an observer facing towards that one and an observer facing towards this one. Then remove all the blocks underneath of them. Then you could come in with a honey for a mob to sit inside a boat right here. And you could push a mob into the boat. And once inside, you can also ride inside the boat. Then place a block beside this observer to update it. And all of a sudden you got a fly machine that can move you and another mob. You could also move mobs upwards by using this fly machine. Place down an observer, then a slime block. Can't be a honey for this one. Then a sticky piston facing up, then a slime above that, and a sticky piston on the side facing downwards. Then place an observer on top of this facing towards a piston, and these slime machines are designed for Java. Then come in with the boat on top, and then you can push a mob up against the side of the boat and it'll automatically pick it up. Then to get it started, all you have to do is update the bottom observer, and you can either ride on the machine or ride in the boat. And the fly machines can be stopped by placing an immovable block above it or in front of it. You can also use the nether dimension to move mobs a great distance. Just pull them through it, and when you go in yourself, they'll still be on your lead. For every one block you move to the nether, you'll be moving a distance of 8 of them in the overworld. Keep in mind, jockeys as well as bosses can't go through portals. And in Java Edition, you can do this on top of the bedrock ceiling, which makes it super easy and safe. Unlike other portals, gateway portals can actually take mobs as passengers through them. And if you use one of these random gateway portals which generate, you can actually have stuff immediately teleport right here to the obsidian platform. And combining these methods together can get you some really OP results, such as using weakness on the warden and turtle master on the player, as well as netherite armor, will cause one of the strongest mobs in the game to do no damage. Now share this with other Minecrafters and credit Ray's works. Now check out more useful tricks in this playlist here, or this one all about simple farms. And don't forget to join me on all my other social media, like on TikTok where my recent video almost reached 2 million views, or on Twitter where I sometimes upload in real life photos. Thank you for supporting and watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye